in this word. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We're in the presence of royalty. It's our sovereign God and King. I find rest for my soul and strength in my life. Lying here at your feet. Mm. That right there preach, but that's not the message for today. Amen. Amen. If, if you'll turn with me. Uh, back to 2 Peter, I'm sorry, yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3, it's the same scripture that we read two weeks ago, and we were going to read on last week, and we'll read again next week, and, and, and the week after that until we're done with this particular passage of scripture, amen? So if you'll stand to your feet, grab your Bibles and stand to your feet. Read with me responsibly. Verses 3 down to 11. We'll read verse 11 all together. I'm reading from the New International Version. That's the version that's also on the screen. If you have another version, uh, you can read along in that as well. Once you have 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, say amen. Amen. The word of the Lord reads like this. It says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort. Notice that. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. And to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective mm. and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, there's always a but. Anytime, anytime there's a promise in the word of God, there's always an if and a but. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers, you are all more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. All together. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Courageous Christian character. Developing courageous Christian character on uh, the week before last, because we didn't even get to a message last week. Um, I'm still basking in the glow, uh, uh, the afterglow of my uh, my intimate moment with God on last Sunday. It was incredible and amazing, I tell you. Uh, if you weren't here, you missed, you missed it. Uh, but uh, we're, we're all still in the afterglow, so you might get a little bit from the afterglow. Amen. Uh, but on, on the week before last, we talked about faith. We talked about the peace uh, in, in verse number five where it says, make every effort to add to your faith, to your faith, to your faith, to your faith. So we dealt with faith. We dealt with faith on uh, on a couple different levels uh, on, on the week before last. And, and this week we're going to look at adding to that faith goodness. And some versions of, uh, of your Bibles may say virtue, adding to your faith virtue. And that word virtue or goodness 
means moral excellence. Moral excellence. Adding to your faith. Moral excellence. Wow. We can hang out right there for, for today. Hanging, I mean, uh, 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 dealing with moral excellence. Why is it important uh, for me to live a morally excellent life? Why is it important for me to, to strive to add to my faith moral excellence? Uh, why should, why, why can't my faith be enough? Why can't I believe and just be me, just do me? Why do I have to add to my faith this, this component or this other, this added component or ingredient called moral excellence? What's the purpose of it? Why, why do I need to, to add that to my faith? And today we're going, we're going to find out. We're going, to, we're going to ask that question and we're going to try to answer that question on today. So let me just ask you these three questions just for, just for the sake of asking. You don't have to answer. I don't want, want y'all to shout up here your answers to these questions. Some of them might make you think, in the first place, but, but if you can remember them or can't remember them, I challenge you to write them down and, and then go back and answer them during your quiet time uh, with the Lord. Amen. The first one is this. In what areas do you strive for excellence and why? In what areas do you strive for excellence and why? I, you know, we serve an excellent God. There is no reason that we should not be striving for excellence in every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. We should be striving for excellence on our jobs because we do what we do on our jobs as unto the Lord. We should strive in our marriages to be the very best that we can be to and for our spouses because we are doing it as unto the Lord. When we're raising our children, we ought to raise them in an excellent manner. We ought to strive to raise them in an excellent manner so that they grow up understanding that Everything that, everything that they do has to be done in excellence. Where there is excellence, you can also say that there's decency and there is order. If there is no decency and no order, how can a thing be excellent? So in what areas do you strive for excellence and, and why? Here's the second question. How do you know when you are striving for moral excellence? How do you know when you are striving for moral excellence? I tell you, uh, uh, if I had, if I had received this teaching uh, uh, some years ago, some things in my life would be different right now because I would have had <clears throat> I would have had this teaching, and maybe maybe or maybe not. Maybe maybe things would have been different. Maybe, they, maybe it would have been the same because I don't know. Maybe I wasn't ready to receive it then. But I hope that you're ready to receive what God is, is, is wanting to impart into you today. Uh, um, what, there are some things that we do because we desire to do them. There's some things that we do because we desire the outcome that comes with the thing that we're going to do. Uh, but in striving for moral excellence, Sometimes you've got to take the high road and, and, and go about things the right way in order to get the right result or to get the result that is going to not only bring God glory and honor, but also uh, 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 make you righteous in his sight. There's some things that you just, that, you know, it just, okay, all um, right. How do you know when you're striving for moral excellence? Here's the last question, and we're going to move on. Why should moral excellence be an issue for the Christian? Ooh. 
question moral excellence be an issue for